Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Rob Reese. I'm here at the Denison Pequot Seacoast Nature Center. And I'm feeling a little inspired today. So I'm going to teach you how to draw a turtle shell. Uh, I have two turtles to show you. First, the noisy one. So right here we have, this is Jem. And she is a uh, diamondback terrapin. She's a beautiful turtle, and on her shell, like all turtles, she has scoots. They're really modified scales, but what's interesting is that they create a pattern, and I believe all but one turtle has the same number of scoots, and that's 13. Now she is a strong turtle, very good swimmer. You can see she's got all sorts of patterns. She's got patterns on her skin, She's got patterns on the side. She's got a cute smile. Okay. So we're gonna look at the scoots and we're gonna draw them, but we're not gonna draw them exactly the way you see it. Instead, we're gonna get creative with it. Be inspired to do our own thing. Check out that pattern, that's kinda cool. It almost looks like an, a Mayan, um, Lion symbol or something. So that's Gem. And just for sample's sake, I have one more. You know, a little variety. He's got a different kind of pattern. This is Clyde. He's an Eastern box turtle. Please don't pee on my drawing. And, um, so you can see he's got the same kind of pattern in terms of his scoots, but he's also got this other pattern, this, this camouflage. It almost looks like the letter F there, right? He's got another one over there, but backwards. So, uh, so he has some interesting patterns too. So we're going to take a look at the scoots. Now, when we look closely at the scoots, you can see that they are pretty close to either rectangles or maybe even um, a hexagon. So, so think of a six-sided shape. So one side, two sides, and then maybe like a, a really shallow point there, right? So that shape is sort of a hexagon. And then these shapes here, you know, they're a little bit like trapezoids, rectangles. So we're going to simplify those shapes into something we can, we can draw from our imagination here. So, <clears throat> put him back. So there's five scoots right up the middle of the turtle's back. And they're roughly hexagons. So we're gonna start here. Our whole turtle shell is gonna be a little too big. It's gonna be like about that big. And um, it's gonna be right in the middle because we're just gonna draw the shell and we want to make cool designs in it. We don't wanna focus on you know, drawing exactly what a turtle looks like. So here we go. So we're gonna start with that middle scoot here. And we're gonna put a parallel line below it. I think about that is good. And we're gonna have that, that shallow point. What's cool about this is that it doesn't have to be perfect. And then, so that's that middle one. So we need two above it and two below it. So here we go. They don't need to all be the same. In fact, if they're a little different each time, you're probably better off. You'll notice that I'm 
putting them parallel, but they're, this one's a little wider. Make this one a little thinner. A little different again. I'm going to put the point up there a little bit. And then this one here. Okay, so there's my scoots. Now, uh, so that's the five scoots there. And then we need the, the rest of the scoots are going to be over here. Okay. Um, so it's 13. So if we take a line from each point, Put a curved line there. Curved. Curved. Oh, we might have made that one too big. We'll fix that later. Curved. There we go. Don't let your drawing run away from you. There we go. We have five. Uh, that's nine. Right? That's our 13. Eh. So it's not gonna be that realistic. So here we go, we're gonna put another one here. And we're gonna put, uh, yeah, at least another one here. And then after that, we're gonna put these little lines out from there. It's funny, when I did it at home, it worked out to be exactly 13. It's odd that the math changed. It must be that new math. I'm not sure. This one. There we go. And then we're going to put lines there. And that's actually the outline. You'll notice that I don't just make a a circle around it, right? It, it actually helps make it a little bit more like scales if I stop at each line. That way I don't get too lazy and just make a big circle. Now, that's our turtle shell. And despite the lack of uh, accuracy in terms of the numbers, it looks pretty good. It looks like a nice little turtle shell. What I'm gonna do though now is I'm going to, um, I'm going to reinforce those lines. So I'm gonna go around and kind of quickly, I'm gonna go over all of them. And I'm intentionally or, or not a mistake, at least, to round off the corners, to be a little sloppy about it. I'm actually gonna use that to make it look a little bit more, almost a little bit more realistic, actually. So I'm just gonna go around. And you could actually do this. You could actually just keep doing this, if you just did this the whole time and filled up the whole thing like this, and it would actually make uh, a pretty good turtle shell. And you could do it like you know, over and over and over and keep getting smaller and smaller, kind of like that. And uh, it actually makes a pretty good image, but I'm gonna 
change it up for the middle. So, So, um, you know any good songs about the turtles? I, I was looking, I didn't see anything. No good turtle shell jokes. I don't know. So, maybe I won't make you watch me do the whole thing like this, but you get the idea. Uh, the same technique is used to like highlight letters. If you were doing lettering, you would put extra lines, accent lines. If you were a cartographer, you might use the same kind of technique to indicate that that's a shoreline. Right? Because that would be like um, the water rather than the, the land. Obviously, you'd be much neater about it than I'm being right now. Now, I'm, I went straight to Sharpie and, and did, did it without the ability to erase. Um, certainly, you could use a pencil and then go over it with a marker. But I do suggest a, a, like a permanent marker. So, if you have young children doing this, perhaps supervise them. Put something down over the table or something to protect it. But. Older kids should be able to handle it. So now, <clears throat> inspired by the pattern, and obviously I would keep going, right? Do the whole thing. But inspired by the patterns that we saw in the turtle shell, we have other colors here, and in each scoot, I'm going to put a different pattern, a different texture, right? Uh, so I'm going to start with green, right here in the middle, and uh, I'm just going to do little circles. I'm going to try to keep them as consistent as possible. But at the same time, I'm not going to stress if they're a little off. I really don't uh, care because uh, having them be a little bit off and um, inconsistent a little bit, you know, just makes the whole drawing have more character. Now, you can get as complicated or as simple with your patterns as you want. Uh, there's also some benefit in terms of um, if you're dressing up <clears throat> stressing out about this this pandemic that we seem to be in the middle of. A lot of people find this type of drawing repetitive, you know, um, textures and whatnot. <clears throat> Relaxing, so you can use it just to relax. Focus on something else. Focus on all the little circles. Happy little circles. There we go. All right, so in the next one, I'm going to change it up. And I don't want to do anything that small, so I want to do something bigger. Uh, so I'm going to do uh, a diamond right here in the middle. Thank you, Jem, for your diamond back patterns here. That looks pretty good, actually. Just like the uh, rest of it, I'm just gonna 
I'm just going to keep going with it. Reinforce it. So each little scoop isn't going to be all that amazing. It's when you put all the scoops together or look at the drawing as a whole. Um, then it, it becomes more and more interesting. I feel like it's missing something though with that. Maybe just a couple of dots in between. You can just vary the pattern a little bit. If you like art history, you can look up uh, the, uh, the texture rhinoceros. And uh, you'll see this rhinoceros drawing. <clears throat> it has all these little textures on it. It's really a fantastic drawing. Let's see, um, more inspiration. Maybe we need a letter shape. Here we go. Uh, let's do the letter R. I don't know why that's my favorite, but it is. Here we go. Do, 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 do. So we put the letter R in there, and we're going to fill that up with these squiggly lines. So if I were to keep going, right, I would have a whole turtle shell full of different patterns, different shapes and patterns, right? Um, and, and uh, you know, doing it, you know, making it is part of the, part of the point, not just, um, not just what it looks like, although I think it's, it's a good start for an interesting drawing. So anyway, uh, give it a shot. And, um, you know, if you want take a picture and send it to me, uh, via the comments. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.